Hello, I'm Maxine Waters, a member of Congress serving California's 43rd Congressional District and the ranking member of the House Committee on Financial Services. Yesterday, Donald Trump had the audacity to call upon people to set aside differences when in reality he has divided Americans in ways no other modern president has done. We must look at his State of the Union address in the context of all of the ways he defined himself during his campaign and throughout his first year as president. Donald Trump defined himself in his response to the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville when he defended white supremacists and the KKK, even after a young woman protesting against racism was killed by a white supremacist. After Trump defended white supremacists, targeted Muslims with his travel ban, described Mexicans as rapists, and mocked people with disabilities, it's impossible to believe him when he tries to declare that he wants to bring the country together. One speech cannot and does not make Donald Trump presidential. He's not presidential, and he never will be presidential. He claims that he's bringing people together, but make no mistake, he is a dangerous, unprincipled, divisive, and shameful racist. Trump often works to convince dissatisfied elements in our society that all of their problems are caused by people of color. He stokes racial animosity by referring to black NFL players as sons of bitches and demonizing immigrants from Haiti and Africa. This president, with his vulgarity and his disrespect for women and people of color, is a terrible role model for our children. Whenever he appears on TV, there should be a disclaimer that says, this may not be acceptable for children. Not only has Donald Trump failed on domestic policy, he is leading us in the wrong direction in the world. He withdrew the United States from the Paris Agreement on climate change, despite the participation of nearly every country in the world. He routinely insults our democratic allies while showing admiration for dictator Vladimir Putin, despite the fact that Russia interfered with our election and undermined our democracy. He refused to certify the Iran nuclear agreement, which has prevented Iran from developing nuclear weapons. He is isolating us with his inept trade policies, withdrawing the United States from trade agreements without negotiating viable alternatives. My remarks today are not merely a response to this President's State of the Union address. They are a warning to the American people, a warning that this president does not deserve to represent us, and that he's taken America down the road to isolation and division. Donald Trump constantly brags about himself, but he does not take the time to learn about public policy or study the many challenges facing the United States and the world, and he has no understanding of true leadership. He attempts to take credit for economic growth but refuses to acknowledge that he inherited our nation's thriving economy from our nation's first black president. Under President Obama, the unemployment rate fell from 10% to 4.8%, and the African-American unemployment rate fell nine percentage points. Unfortunately, the Republicans in Congress, led by Paul Ryan, and Mitch McConnell are terribly irresponsible in the way in which they enable him and refuse to confront him. And they have abdicated their responsibility to the citizens of this nation by condoning his actions. We, as Democrats, are committed to a growing economy that leaves no one behind. We're committed to an economy that protects consumers and provides good jobs with fair wages, quality health care, and affordable housing. These are the policies for which I have worked all of my life and on which I will continue to work despite 
the constant chaos and distractions of this administration. Increasingly, millions of Americans have recognized that Donald Trump is detrimental to our nation. We deserve better. That's why I have called for his impeachment. Some believe it's too early. I disagree. The time is now. We must organize, challenge, and resist.